we'll talk about pulling a vacuum. Whether you are pulling the valve core or not, if you're doing an evacuation for service, I highly recommend you're using the valve core removal tool and that we are actually pulling the valve core out of this valve body. And then if you have a valve core in here, I'd be getting that out of there as well. So we get full flow to our vacuum. We're just doing this on a multi-zone unit. Let's pretend this is just a single zone unit. That gives us the golden opportunity to have a place to hook up our vacuum gauge. So when we're pulling a vacuum, we're open to our vacuum pump and we're pulling our vacuum and watching our micron gauge to make sure we're getting down below 500 microns. Once we reach that, this gives you the ability to shut off from your vacuum pump right at the machine and then monitor your vacuum on your vacuum gauge to make sure the machine is holding that 500 microns or less. By having the valve cores out of there, you improve your flow and you're gonna increase the evacuation time in other words, speed it up so that we get our vacuum done even faster. So also with that, when you are pulling down a vacuum for the entire machine, that's when we're going to highly recommend that we pull a vacuum until it stalls. In other words, we're no longer achieving any movement with the vacuum gauge. Once we get to that point where it's just like, okay, this thing's the pump's running, we're really not gaining any more vacuum, we're nowhere near where we need to be, that's where we recommend at that point you're going to want to pull off your micron gauge. Oil is a contaminant to your micron gauge, so you don't want any oil getting into the, into the micron gauge, even if it is rated for uh, 500 PSI or whatever it is that it says is okay the oil is going to contaminate it and it's going to read incorrectly and you that, have to clean it. And that's a good point. So, so then with, from there, we can easily grab our nitrogen tank then and we can take that blue hose just direct. You don't even have to have the manifold. Hook up to our nitrogen tank and just fill it with a little bit of nitrogen. I'm talking 5 PSI. We don't need a lot. Let it sit in there for about 10 minutes. Just disconnect the hose let it dissipate the nitrogen back off, rehook back up, and then do your evacuation process again. Remember to put your vacuum gauge back on there so that once we get down to 500 microns or less, then we can go ahead, at that point we're gonna have that open. Then we can go ahead and isolate again, see where we're at until we finally achieve that 500 microns or less. Triple evacuation, I've even had instances where I did a quadruple evacuation so, you know, just a, a lot of it depends on the temperature outside. That plays a role. And if it's really cold, don't forget, you could actually get refrigerant trapping up in your compressor and your accumulator. So, you know, it always sounds like the painstaking way of doing things, but I learned a long time ago, sometimes if you make things worse, you can make things better, <laughs> faster. So getting that front panel off and getting that jacket opened up a little on a compressor and just taking a heat gun and, and just gently warming that compressor while you got that nitrogen in there, that'll help that boil, that refrigerant boil out of there. We get all that out. So it's not affecting you being able to achieve that 500 micron level. Anytime I got to pull down the condenser coil and the compressor, that's where I'm really geared to. I want to do at least a triple evacuation. I want to make sure I've got a good dehydrated system before we go to weigh that charge back in. When you have a multi-zone machine, to be isolate being further away from it, we can actually use another adapter or use this adapter. And we can actually hook up our micron gauge on one of the other ports. So now we're even further isolating away and know what our actual vacuum is on that machine side of it. Again, you're going to need some kind of a shutoff tool you, to be able to make sure that we're isolating our vacuum pump from what the machine vacuum is. So, you know, you achieve it with the vacuum pump running, you got your 500 microns, but then you want to shut off and make sure you're isolating and you're getting the true vacuum. Let's say I've got a four or five zone machine. Right now I'm hooked up to the A circuit and he may have his gauge on that A circuit. And I'll be like, okay, so now that we only have the B or the C circuit running, 
what's your pressure? Well, they were like, oh, hang on a minute, let me move my gauge. You don't need to move your gauge. The point to all this, and as you can see, if you look at the piping coming out, it all goes to one common suction manifold. So we don't need to move the gauge. So and that's also where I talk about an install. I actually recommend these valves are closed, that we pull a vacuum on one circuit at a time, make sure we've reached our 500 microns, isolate, and then that way I know for sure, okay, that holds 500 microns. I don't have any leaks on that, on that particular circuit. So now I can go ahead and open that circuit up, move to my next circuit, pull vacuum on that circuit. The last thing I want to do is try to pull it all down at once, and now I don't know which circuit's actually causing my leak, causing my micron gauge to rise. So it gives us a way to isolate by utilizing the service valves within the machine. So any questions come in that we need to answer? So we do have a good many. Um, in what other scenario is necessary to evacuate refrigerant um, do vacuum and weigh it back in. Anytime you've got a, a suspicion of the unit being low on charge, whether yeah. you had a leak, you fix a leak, anytime a that you're, you're uh, not 100% sure that that charge is what the factory charge should be. You know, you might have been the third or the fourth guy to be working on this machine. You don't, don't know, know what the previous company's done to it. You don't know what the previous tech has done to it. So you get a recovery tank. It doesn't have to be an empty one. It only has to be an empty, clean tank if you plan on reusing that refrigerant. Correct. But if you don't plan on reusing the refrigerant, weigh your tank before recovery, weigh your tank after recovery. Now you know exactly how much refrigerant Record, you pulled out. Write down how much refrigerant you pulled yep. out. So you have a, a starting point of was this an issue or not an issue, and then you can move forward with weighing in the correct charge and go from And there. if you pull that charge out and you're, you know, three pounds down, well, you know what's next. It'll be leaking search, somewhere. So for a leak. So that's where, and I will tell guys all day long, the best thing to do at that point then is put about another half a pound of a pound refrigerant back in that machine and then bust out that nitrogen tank, tank run that pressure up to 450, 500 pounds of pressure. That way you've got a trace refrigerant in there. So you can use an electronic leak detector, and you got enough pressure on it to pick up that lower, the small leak. We're gonna peace out this time around, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.